Hey, what's up, YouTube? Granny Gear here for Old Guy in a Bike. I'm getting ready to go for a ride. I'm not going alone. No, I'm not. I'm gonna be riding with my guest. We'll be shooting some video later tonight. You know, when I first started this channel, one of the things I wanted to do was to inspire. I wanted to inspire the older athlete, the person who's looking to stay active in their lives, to challenge themselves a little bit. I wanted to inspire them just to keep moving, to keep out there and to keep going. Well, tonight, I hope you'll be inspired because I'm going riding with an Iron Man. Stay tuned. This is Guy. Hello. Guy's an Iron Man. You may not know it by looking at him, but this guy's been competing in running events and swimming events and triathlons and who knows what else for probably more years than a lot of you guys and gals have been alive. We're gonna be sitting down later and talking about his life, how he's met some of the challenges, some of the victories he's had, and I hope he encourages you to get out and do some amazing things for yourself. In the meantime, we got our bikes. We're gonna go for a ride. Catch you back later. Guy Moore, Iron Man. <laughs> I mean, that's not nothing, that's something. But before you got to that, before you got that uh, pretty cool tattoo on your calf, we got to go back a little ways. So let's go back to you. You told me you started running just out of high school. Yes. How was that for you? It was kind of a life altering experience. <laughs> you know, I was going through the teenage years and I just felt like I needed to do something to wear myself out or something. So I went to the local college and ran around the track once, a whole quarter mile oh, at wow. once. Wow and I was sore and exhausted. Uh. Then the next week, after I recovered from that, I went and ran two laps, a whole half mile. Wow. And I was hooked. Wow. And that's where it built from. So I've been running since I was 18 and I'm 67 now. Wow. One more year and I'll have 50 years of running in. Wow. That's a long time to run. It's a lot of shoes. That's a lot of shoes. <laughs> <laughs> so you kept running. Why do, what was it about that that, I mean, you know it helped you at the time, but you're still running. Wow. I guess it started my endorphin addiction, perhaps. Okay. <laughs> um, I just felt like I needed to do something to wear myself out, and it made me feel good about myself. Mm. I think what I figured out many, many years later, that I was looking to increase my self-esteem. Oh. And the satisfaction of doing something hard mm. felt really good. You know, I did a video, The Magic of Doing Hard Things. I don't know if you had a chance to see that, but I'll link that um, later on at the end of the video. But it talks about what I have found has benefited me in life and I think is true for people. Um, to, you know, stretching yourself and suffering a little bit for your own good cause, you know? Sure. So now at some point, you decide to make this, you know, a lifestyle and you began competing and that happened how long after you decided running was fun? I probably started doing my first race, running races maybe about three years later. Okay. And that was before five Ks existed. Everything yeah. was 10 K or longer. Uh -huh. And um, my first race was over at Pierce College in Woodland Hills, a very hilly course. I'd never run a hill like that before. Wow. And I was sick for three days after. <laughs> But I felt so good about it. That's awesome. That's <laughs> awesome. And now, triathlons, that's a whole other animal. Just, that's more than running, right? Obviously, there's biking and swimming and all that, you know, that Correct. kind of stuff. That's, a, that's next level commitment and everything. Yeah, well, what sort of got me going towards triathlon is I kept injuring myself running. You know, you, you're feeding the addiction and then you do more than you should. Mm. You know, I wasn't using a schedule. I didn't have a trainer. I was just figuring out as I went. Right. And um, triathlon allowed me to get my endorphin fix. 
three different ways. Oh, wow. And yeah. the cross training was also beneficial for my running, um, so I would injure less. Yeah, yeah. So now we took a tour of your, uh, your upstairs war room. You got a whole bunch of medals, and what did, what did you call those things you pin on a jersey? I can never remember what those are called. The, the oh, um, the race number, the race, bib, race bibs. Race bibs, race yeah. bibs. You got more race bibs than I've seen in one room altogether. That's, that's pretty crazy. How many events do you think you participated in over the years? Well, running races, I'm guessing 250, 300 at least. And then triathlons, I've done close to 150. Mm. And then I've done some open water swimming also. Really, open water like, like out in the out ocean. Out in yeah. the Really? Yeah, my, my, uh, my f favorite event I ever did was swimming from Alcatraz and then you run seven miles up across the Golden Gate Bridge and back. So Alcatraz is the old prison island in the bay. Yeah. With the sharks and the cold water and the currents. Right, and the... right. Wow. That was so, kind of an epic event for oh, me too. Yeah, that's, to that's totally epic. And that's a whole other story. <laughs> it's totally epic. But we had talked a little bit along the way, you had some challenges, right? You, you found out that your body wasn't maybe functioning as, as well as you'd like it, and you had to work through some of that. Tell me about that a little bit. Well, I discovered I had AFib and sleep apnea, um, maybe kind of in the middle of my life. And treating those, one with medication and the other with the CPAP machine, entirely changed my life. Mm. I just wish I'd known it sooner because mm. I could have really been fast. Mm. But why didn't that stop you? Because that would have been a good excuse to not <laughs> be an Iron Man, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah, I guess I, I just didn't want to say I was getting old and I liked the challenge, you mm. know? And I'm kind of an individual sport guy because I was the kid that never got picked at school. Me too. <laughs> I was skinny. Yeah. I was six Me foot too. one, 118 pounds. Well, I weighed more than you, but not by a lot. <laughs> and so I figured um, I'd be self, relying on myself yeah. and not having to get picked. Yeah. And um, I like that idea. I only did as good as I did. And mm. I wasn't hindering anyone, nor was anyone holding me back. Yeah, right, right. It was all on me. I think there's a lot of um, this type of sport, even in cycling and marathons and, and cross-country running and the ultra-endurance stuff. That, there's a lot of people that can get within themselves and just do it for themselves and not do a team. You know, I think that's yeah. a lot of individuals gravitate to that, it seems like to me. So now... You've been doing this for a long time. You've worked through, you know, the physical challenges. You got that under control. As an older athlete, as, as things are progressing, what are the things you're learning about yourself that, that change a little bit? Well, I think the key word here with a lot of emphasis is elasticity. Hmm. We talked about the medical challenges and we talk about the physical challenges. Um, you know, like have to wear orthotics um, yeah. to, so my knees don't get jacked up. Mm. Um, I have to roll and stretch. I have to ease into things. Um, and the older I get, the more I have to be conscious of that mm. um, or I'll injure. Right. And then I can't have fun. Right, right. Well, we don't want that because what's our goal, right? And we'll talk about this at the end of this, but our goal should be as we're aging, you know, we're athletes aging into our later years, we want to keep moving. Right. We want to keep having fun. We don't want to hurt ourselves though. Right. We want to push ourselves a little bit, you know, find out what those limits are. And our limits, you know, drop a little over time. Is, that's inevitable. But it's surprising what you can still accomplish. You yeah. stay healthy. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't have health, you don't have anything. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> absolutely true. Yeah. I mean, we're very blessed that you and I can still do what we do go on our bikes like we just did and do a ride at, uh, well, you're 67, I'm 65, or we'll be around the corner. I'm 64 right now. Look yeah. at us. Yeah. Gold, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to sit on the couch and wait to die. No, you know. I'm going to live life. I'll be out And on participants my... of life, they get hurt and stuff. Yeah. If you want to be real safe, just stay on the couch. Yeah. Yeah. Die yeah. of a heart attack instead. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was out on a ride the other day with, with a, he, my riding buddy, Tom. I don't think you've met Tom, but he's 68, I believe now. And up until his heart attack, right, the recent heart attack, they got all that fixed. He was, um, excuse my phone, he was, uh, 
doing double centuries. Huh. And then, you know, found out that uh, his heart needed a little bit of attention and they got that under control. He's good and he's back out doing, we're doing crazy rides. But we were riding, we're like, look at us two old guys. We just did a 26 mile climb. And other people are sitting on the couch thinking, oh, I couldn't do something like that. Yeah. But you can do something. You can do something, right? You can challenge yourself and keep moving. It may, you may not be able to do a 26 mile climb, but maybe, maybe you can do your first 20 mile bike ride or your first 100 mile bike ride. Or if you were just walking up the hill at the end of your street could be a challenge for some people. Sure. But uh, it's healthy for us, I think, you know, to push a little bit for things like that. Yeah, I think it's important for your physical health and mental health. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, the Iron Man, that came, the, the, I mean, legit Iron Man that earned you that really cool tattoo, which I'm a little envious about. That came how many years in? Um, probably 25 years into doing triathlons. And the reason it waited so long is I had a demanding job. And once mm -hmm. I retired, I could do the training. Right. Right, yeah. and but but that was what thirteen years ago? No, ten uh, years ago. Ten years ago. Ten years ago, you did this. Yeah. Now I want to read something. You sent me a really cool write-up on on how that went for you, and I want to read just a little bit of it. This was, uh, I, I'm like, man, this is this is how it's crazy stuff. So this is you. Now this Iron Man, Lake Tahoe. So for those of you that don't know, Lake Tahoe is a high mountain lake in the Sierra Nevada mountains of California, California Nevada border there. Beautiful, but it's cold up there. Okay, this is in September, so it's already getting cold up there that high. He's talking about the swim. The air was 29 degrees and there was ice on my bike. No fears, I had experienced worse start conditions in the 2012 Boise Half Ironman, which Somehow I can't imagine what's worse than 29 degrees and ice on your bike, but I'll let that go for now. Hmm. I never thought I would see steam coming off 58 degree water. I went out and I maintained an 80% effort as I knew I had a very long and challenging day ahead of me. Not a good idea to try and throw down 100% effort at a 6,200 feet of altitude. It was a truly beautiful sight at the far course marker buoy. The crystal clear water with the steam rising, blue skies and the snow-capped mountains in the background. Ah, this is my office. I wished I'd had a camera. I think I would have wished for a life preserver <laughs> or a blanket or something. This is the finish. After getting into the cold water at about 6.40 a.m., I was now coming into the finish at about 11.30 p.m. The lights were blindingly bright. The crowds who had stuck it out in the freezing cold were cheering deafening loud, high-fiving me. And then I heard those cherished words I had trained so hard to hear. Guy Moore, you are an Iron Man. I felt like a rock star. I was in a stunned state until I went to bed. Hunger woke me up early the next morning and then the emotion set in. I kept replaying yesterday's voyage and asking myself, how did I do that? Later I found out this was the hardest Iron Man event ever. Boy, do I know how to pick them. I had to think that that puts a mark on your life, mark yeah. of accomplishment. Yeah, I'd say definitely uh, probably top five, tip, top six things I've done in my life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, hands off to you. Um, that takes a lot of dedication. You, you gave me the numbers, the miles that you rode, the elevation, the, the, the miles you ran and swam to get ready for that. It's, it's, a, it's stunning. I mean, it, all by itself, that was an accomplishment, just to get ready for that. It's pretty incredible, really. Yeah, the training's the hard part. Race day, if you've tapered, that's the reward. Yeah. So now what? What? I mean, you've kind of pinnacle, right? That was pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you have any Ironmans in, in the plans, but, but regardless, you're still moving on. You're still out there doing stuff. How is it right now for you as an older athlete? Well, it's... It's a series of adjustments. It's mm. like the dog that loses a leg and it becomes three-legged. Le mm. You just adjust, mm. you know? You see, I've seen plenty of three-legged dogs running around, so I kind of think of that way, you know? <laughs> That's funny. What, what would you, for someone who is seeing this and saying, dude, I can't do that. Maybe they can't. 
it might be unrealistic, right? Because um, for whatever reason, but, but they can do something. What do we tell those people? Try it. Surround yourself with other athletes, and you'll get you'll get through it. Mm. You know, I never thought I'd be doing an Ironman. Mm. I remember watching it on ABC's Wide World of Sports many years ago. Yeah, and yeah, you I, saw something that inspired you. On that's that. that's what inspired me. The lady cross crawling across the finish line, falling down, standing up. Wow. She was in first place, and I think she lost a place or two, but she still got third. Wow. It was the determination. Yeah. To finish. Yeah. And. It just choked me up when I watched that. Yeah. I never, ever, ever thought I'd be doing one of those, yeah. and I did it. Isn't the human spirit amazing? Yeah. What drives us to, to accomplish things like that for, you know, there's a lot of pain and suffering involved. In yeah, it's not for a little metal. It's, no, it's, it's not for, for the, that. It's for the satisfaction and accomplishment. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Hmm. Guy, it's been great getting to know you. Um, I, I love hearing your stories. I think we'll just have to sit around the campfire with a, I don't know, a flask of whiskey or something one night and, <laughs> and do a list a little bit more. Well, that's a wrap. I hope you've enjoyed meeting Guy as much as I have. And I look forward to more bike rides with him and rides to coffee with the group. And you know what? We're a couple old guys and we're out there still doing it. And you know what? I'd love to see that for you guys too. You may be younger than us, but you're gonna catch us eventually. Keep out there, keep moving. Keep healthy. If you're not healthy, get healthy. Get some help. Get some great people around you. Surround yourself with people who are still moving at whatever age they are because it's inspiring. I hope it's been inspirational for you guys. Maybe I'll see you outside. If you do, make sure you wave, okay? Granny gear out for old guy in a bike.